Let's talk about polylines. We already know one way to compare them, and that's the Hausdorff distance. We saw that you can calculate it in linear earthquake runtime, but what we really wanted to do was solve map matching. And in that context, something a little bit weird is going on with the Hausdorff distance. By its definition, this maximum over this minimum, it kind of establishes a correspondence between points on the one polyline and points on the other. But this correspondence turns out to be a little bit weird in our application. Let's have a look. Now, these two polylines are quite dissimilar, so in a way it's not entirely fair to compare them, but if you don't have a lot of GPS points and there's a bunch of noise, something like this could happen. So along the polyline P1, we can look at these points P1, Q1, and R1. And then for each of them, let's see where the minimum is realized on the distance to the polyline P2. And now my claim is, in terms of map matching, this is kind of weird, because if we go along P2, we encounter these points in the order Q2, P2, R2. But it used to be PQR, so what are we saying here? Are we really saying that our explanation for the blue polyline is that somebody went on the red road and went to P2 and then came back to Q2 and then swapped directions in this way? I don't think so. And worrying about this kind of consistency brings us to the definition of the Frechet distance. Informally, it goes like this. I have this suspicious looking man in a trench coat on the blue polyline, and I have his dog on the red polyline. And then there is a dog leash between them, indicated in black for their current positions in this diagram. Both of them only go forward on their polyline, and that means that from now on the polylines are directed. Like I said, they're not allowed to go backwards, but they are allowed to stand still and move at any speed. And our question becomes, how long does the dog leash need to be in order for both of them to reach the end of their polyline? We get to pick the progression of each of them along their polyline, and then the Frechet distance is the minimum over all possible ways to walk of how long the line needs to get the black line, which is the dark leash in the metaphor. And I would say that intuitively this is a decent distance measure between the polylines. And for map matching, it even gives us a reasonable mapping from the one curve to the other. I said curve here and not polyline because you could do this for arbitrary curves, but let's forget about that immediately and just focus on polylines. Let's talk about polylines. So far I've treated them as a set of points and the linear interpolations between subsequent points. Now we'll look at an entire polyline as one parameterized curve. So let's call our first polyline P1, small p at this point, because this is now a function that gives us a single point, and it has, as its argument, a number t, and this t is a real number between 0 and m minus 1, where m is the number of points on the polyline big P1. We define this function as follows. For integer t, p1 of t is the t plus first vertex of p1. So p1 of 0 is the first vertex, and this really shouldn't be confusing to us as computer scientists because we start a lot of things at 0 anyway. And for non-integer t, it is the linear interpolation just like before. There's nothing new here, but it'll be useful to talk about it as a function like this. So for example, p1 of 2.5 is p1 of 2 plus 1 half of the difference between p1 of 3 and p1 of 2. Now here is the definition of the Frechet distance. We start with this distance function d, which is the Euclidean distance as usual, and then we throw in a point from the one polyline and one from the other, but re-parameterized by these functions alpha and beta. These will decide how the man and the dog walk along the polyline. Let's arbitrarily say that the argument to alpha and beta goes from 0 to 1, so like from the start to 100% progress. And we take the maximum over that. How long does the leash need to get if we progress among the polylines like this? We said the man and the dog could walk however they pleased, and we wanted to take the best version of that. So finally, we take the minimum over these functions, alpha and beta. It might seem a little bit weird to minimize over functions, but mathematically there's nothing wrong with that. We just need to be a little bit more specific about what kind of functions. So like I said, I picked both of them to be from the real interval 0 to 1 to the real interval 0 to m minus 1. So then it works out with these parameterized curves p1 and p2. But I need to insist on a couple of properties of these functions alpha and beta. Think about it for a second. 
mathematical functions can be really funky and do really weird things. So what do we want to restrict ourselves to so that this definition does what we want? Walking along the polyline and not going back. Well, let's start with a basic one first. We want alpha zero to equal beta zero to equal zero, because we should start at the beginning of each polyline. Similarly, alpha one and beta one should be m minus one, or m minus one and n minus one if my polylines have different length, because I need to get to the end of the polyline. What would happen if we forget about this condition and calculate this minimum without it? What would be the value of the Fréché distance? Well, I should find the point on P1 that is closest to some point on P2 and then just use alpha and beta to always give those two points. And then I'm really back at our very first definition of distance between polylines. I just look at what is the closest I can get on the one polyline to the other and the Euclidean distance between that is my answer. So in this example, polyline, I just pick any one of these intersection points and then the distance is zero. So yeah, this first condition is necessary. What about not walking backwards? Well, we can just say that these functions need to be monotonically increasing. Or to be slightly more specific, monotonically non-decreasing, because we do allow the value to stay the same. We do allow the man or the dog to stand still. And here's the last property that people tend to forget when I ask them in a live lecture, which is the function should be continuous. We don't allow any teleportation. And this is it. This is the definition of Fréché distance.